Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're going to read God's Word very quickly, 1 through 5. This is Psalms 46. And I'm going to share some testimonies with you to show you just what a present help God is. You don't have to use God as your last resort, baby. I'm going to share with you a little something, something. A little bit of Pat's two cents after reading this. Listen up. Okay. Starting at verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. There is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Now, let me tell you a little something, something about me. I had prayed years ago uh, when I started driving my little jalopies. Um, as some folk call it, little hoopties. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, I've, I've never had a new car. And, you know, most of the, of the forms of transportation I get are, you know, like hand-me-downs or whatever. And I thank you for it. Or they're cheap cars that I've had to buy and get fixed. But I'm asking you, Lord, never, ever please hear this prayer. Would you fix it where I will never be stranded on the road. I will never have to wait hours or half an hour all day or all night by myself on a lonely highway. I will never be alone with no help where I have to sleep in the car till the next morning before help can arrive. I'm just asking you, could you always somehow figure out a way to have help right there within minutes of the problem so that I'm not holding up traffic. I'm not stuck in the middle of a highway. I mean, I covered everything I could with that prayer. Well, I love saying that. Well, what ended up happening was, <laughs> I'm laughing at myself if you wonder what the chuckle's about. I ended up on an exit off ramp. I was getting off at Lake Avenue. And Lake Avenue, you're on the freeway, and then the ramp cuts to the right and is going uphill. And when it goes uphill, it levels off at a stoplight. Major intersection, you guys. Like three or four lane. So I'm sitting there. Oh, my goodness. I went to put my foot on the gas, and the car's not moving. I look down. The engine's off. Well, what happened? I don't know. I'm asking myself and I'm answering, I don't know. <laughs> well, now I'm like, oh, I'm really stuck in a bad place. I'm going to cause a real backup here. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about the prayer. I said, well, Lord, I asked you never let me be stranded. The guy right behind me, he pulls out and he cuts in front of me. Now, I'm still sitting there looking like a dummy. But I'm waiting. I'm waiting on the Lord. And this big old van pulls up, old van pulls up. And the guy comes out of the van, puts his van in park, and asks me if I need help, if I'd like him to push me over across the street, make the left turn, and park me on the side. I was like, thank you. One car. I was only one car away from help. Is that a present help or what? But you got to hear this story. This is in one of my books. Show you what a present help God is. Well, I'm being pushed across Lake Avenue. All, all four lanes. Three lanes or four lanes. Very wide intersection. And he gets me over and parks me. He doesn't just take off and keep going with a wave. He gets out of his van once again. He's parked his van behind me. He gets out of his van. 
And he asked me if I would like for him to look under my hood. So I pop it. He looks under it. He looks all over the engine and the oil and everything else. And he says, your battery is dead. It's no longer good. You need a new battery. I don't have uh, transportation to get me to a battery. I'm, I'm thinking, who can I call at this time of night? I'm like, I don't have the money for a cab. I don't have cash on me. All I have is my bank card. And the only place that would take that, I mean, my credit card. It was a Sears credit card. So I'm thinking, that's the only way I'm going to be able to get a battery. And I'm thinking, but Sears is 10 miles away. What am I going to do? This is rush hour. What does the man say? He says, do you know where, you, you know where you'd like to get a battery? And I told him the only place I can go is Sears. I don't have the cash, but I have a card. And I said, but I got to call somebody. So is there a phone booth around? You know, it was before the days of cell phones. And he says, if you feel okay with it, I'll take you to get your battery. And I said, oh, but it's all the way over at Sears. He said, on Rosemead, right? I said, yeah. He said, I can take you. I was like, you don't mind? He said, no. Boy, we get in his van. He gets back on the freeway. I have a note on my car with the trunk up, you know, me with the hood up. So they know, don't give me a ticket. I'm, I'm coming right back to fix the problem. And then that was a no parking zone. But I didn't get a ticket. We go all the way over. I mean, it was like a 12, 13 minute drive. We get off the freeway, go straight to Sears. Bam, I go in. He's waiting for me now. I go in. I get the battery. He, t he suggests what kind, you know, the most powerful one. I get in, you know, for my size car. I get the battery. I come out, he says, okay, I'll take you back and I'll help you, I'll, I'll, I'll change your battery for you. I'm like, I don't have the money to pay you. He's like, I'm not looking for pay, I can take you, that's no problem. Oh, I'm, I'm tripping. I didn't have the money to give him gas, but I could have used my bank card if he wanted to stop by the gas station. He didn't want to do that. So we go back to Lake Avenue, 10 miles back. Now, this man has put himself out for 20 miles, round trip. And on top of that, puts my battery in my car. Now, I'm telling you to say this. This was a Latino brother who was extremely willing extremely helpful. He didn't know me from Adam. I didn't know him from Adam. But the peace of God let me know this was a safe situation and this was a blessing from him. I am telling you, when you have a need and you have turned those needs over to God, God will send total strangers, total strangers to help you out. And you won't be stranded. Your help will be right there and that right early, as verse 5 says. Now, you wait for the next video. And I'm going to share another one of these crazy testimonies if you want to hear them. I hope they encourage you to turn to God before you turn anywhere. Amen. Amen.